On this episode of Guitar Repair Chronicles, Tucker Bancroft is going to be showing you how he approaches a fret dress on a Martin acoustic guitar. Check it out. All right, guys, we're doing a fret dressing today on this nice Martin Grand Performance cutaway. But uh, it came in. It's a customer's guitar, so he's he's getting the lucky extra attention. But uh, it, it's it's a brand new guitar. It just kind of probably went through some weird humidity changes, weird storage, uh, something like that. But there's there's a pretty good little dip here in the fretboard, and it's actually got a slight bit of twist in it. So we're gonna just level the frets. It's just it's just something that we can deal with with the frets. But uh, I just kind of wanted to show like where we're starting with. It's it's not terrible, but it's got a buzz. can't really have that. Here's the toolkit. We're going to kind of dive right into it and I'll just talk you through a lot of the a lot of the steps cuz I already checked out the guitar. First thing is, you know, we got to troubleshoot it and check it out. But we looked at it. Let's cut these things off. And we got a clean canvas to look at. And uh, I can already tell now it's in back bow a lot, this neck. I don't know if the camera will pick this up. But if you look down it, that string tension was holding it flat. And now it's pretty severely bowed out. So first thing I'm going to do is get it as flat as possible. Got my straight edge. And that shows the back bow very, very severe back bow. Keep going. Loosen this truss rod. And this is like our, we're, I'm showing you how to do a fret dressing with minimal tools. There's tons of other ways to do this and ways to speed it up, but this is a way that uh, a DIY person can do a fret dressing. Still got back bow on the treble side, but it's looking flatter over here. And like I said, this neck has a twist in it. So it's gonna be not perfect. We're probably not gonna get it dead flat. Little back bow here. And see, I've got a little rock here still. But definitely a high point in this middle area. And my truss rod's almost all the way loose. It's it's I just took it all the way loose. So that's all that's all we can do there. What I can do is push this back. A little pressure. This is a good one to demo. It's going to be a tough one. Let's see because we're just not going to be able to get the neck flat because it isn't flat. So we're flat now. This, this straight edge here is pretty nice because we're reading the fretboard now, not the frets, which isn't exactly like what we want all the time. But in my opinion, we have to measure everywhere and, and kind of find a medium, a middle ground somewhere, somewhere to settle. So I can see light through on this side. So that means that this side's still down and that's where we're getting our buzz but it's flat all the way through up here and a little bit of fall away, so that looks good. So this might be like as good as it gets. If I put them on top of the frets, same case. It's the last fret it's touching is right here, and then these two are not being touched by the straight edge. But I'm looking good everywhere else all the way through. So I'm gonna do my best to leave it just like this throughout the rest of this process. Neck block way up here on this end, so that way if I'm pressing down on it, I'm pressing down in the middle. We'll make some marks. I like to use red. I think red Sharpie works the best on uh, frets. I'm able to see it the best. And I was taught that by a former mentor, Jeff Scott. He always showed with red Sharpie. And before I used the red Sharpie, I could never see my lines. 
but he, he builds guitars from a company called Illusion Guitars. It's, it's his shop, it's a one-man shop. Builds incredible guitars, but he's a genius with fretwork. This is a mill bastard flat file. Um, I have it marked right here this side up because it's not 100% flat and I know this file. So I always check it, but there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of relief into this file. So I might go with the upside down on this guitar. But what I always do is whatever file you're using, you can use a block of wood with sandpaper on it, whatever it is, it has to be flat. And you just want to put it on the on the guitar and and make sure that it's flat to the surface, not just not just flat but it's gotta be flat to your guitar. And I could tell right now this is not gonna work because I've got a big, a big bump right there. Usually I use it with it down because I like to have a little bit of relief in it. But in this case, see that rock? That's not gonna work out for us. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a different file. So I have to use a shorter one. Um, we have this from Stu Mack, who a bunch of this stuff's from, but this is a good, it's a good file because it's really thick, it stays really flat. I've got that really flat, and it's also short, so it's not gonna get us into trouble since our neck isn't perfectly flat. So I'll probably start with this, and I also have this, it's a little longer, it's just a couple inches longer, and it's just a steel bar, and what I'll do is stick some sandpaper on it. So I'll cut a little strip, of sandpaper here. And this is good stuff because it's got the, the sticky back. And then we'll just put that on there. This is 400 grit sandpaper and a really fine, uh, fine mill file. I think I'll start with the file because I know we want to cut some stuff. And once again, I want to make sure that this isn't rocking too much. We do have some rocking here. We want this to be as flat as possible on, on the guitar before we start any work. And we, we've got some fall away there we're not worried about. And I can't go any looser with the truss rod, but I can put some pressure on it and see if it's just relieved, relieve a little pressure from the neck. This feels better, this isn't rocking as much. So that's kind of how you, you have to do it. Every neck can be different. I'll just start on one end. No, no pressure down, I'm just kind of holding this side to side. And I'm just gonna make some, some light passes like this, working my way up the neck. Super light, I'm not pushing down on it at all. Letting the, the weight of the metal do the work and the sandpaper. And I'm not going to end up touching the last few frets here because there's fall away built into these acoustics. So the last three or so frets I'm not really going to be touching. What I'm looking for is to remove my red sharpie marks from just the very top of each fret. When I no longer have any red showing, I know that we've taken it all down. So I can tell, you know, like there's, there's a spot right there that we need to go a little further on. But as you can see, this fret, we've made it all the way across. And majority of these were looking like just, just with that little bit of pressure. These two, these three frets here have a little low spot. And there's a little low spot here. And we've just kissed that first fret. So I'm just gonna keep working those areas. And we can do little circle patterns here. Whatever it takes to keep it level. Not overworking one spot ever. I like to go with the direction of the strings bending. You know, if you're gonna be playing and you're bending a string up, we wanna sand that way, never this way, because then 
Even if we polish it out, you know, you can end up with little divots and ruts. So we're never going this way. We're gonna keep it going with the string di direction. But right here and right here are, you know, the string divots from, from people playing right there in the first position. So you can see those little ruts, those are the lowest points, I think, on this neck. So we'll keep going until those low points are gone and keep it even across. Just looking at, looking it down, you have to get so close to look at uh, these is because it's, we're looking at such small, small lines. But from what I can tell, we've made it through our ruts here. We've, we've got those little dots removed. And I'm just looking to see if there's any red showing on the top of the frets. And, and each fret, we're looking good. We have a really thin line, which is what we want, of, of a fresh surface so we know that it's, it's all level across the board. Empty, empty pack of strings. There's nothing in here. I just use this. I'm going to put it on one side of my file under the sandpaper. I'll probably put it all the way under there like that. And this is how we're going to get our fall away. I'm only going to be filing here. So now we can hit the, uh, the ends with just that little down kick. And now we're hitting that last fret finally. I've got my trusty piece of leather. And I just I'm gonna keep this here too. But I'm just gonna hit these last three frets with the beginning of this. <laughs> and see now I, my first reaction I looked at that and I was a little disappointed but um, the fretboard is not level the frets should be so that's what's really important you know that's what's related to the strings sometimes I like to look at, at this one here and I just want to see how level we can get these frets And that's, that's looking great. I'm pretty happy with that. Now we have to dress them. Now we have to make them pretty and smooth and shiny again, because now they're really rough. You know, this is unplayable. Um, so what we'll do, Sharpie again, and we're going to remark, remark all the frets. Now, now we'll be doing kind of the opposite. First pass, we removed the red from the top of each fret. And now we're gonna go, well first I'll, I'll mark all these. But what we're end up with is we're gonna be filing the sides of each fret until we have just a pin line down the middle. So the sides of each fret will, will get a little bit of crowning and that's what, that's what you hear called crowning. Here's the fretboard and that's a fret one single fret, like we're looking down on it, on the end of it. So when we did the leveling, we leveled it off like that, right? And, and there's more frets here. So now our nicely crowned frets look like this, you know, with flat tops, but we want them to be peaky like it was originally. So now we have to take, let me, let me make this bigger so we can really see what's going on. But now we have our flat top fret, and we're gonna have this pin line on the middle of the fret, and we need to remove this material. Right, so then we end up with a nice round fret again. We're just gonna remove all that that I'm shading until we're happy with the shape of it, and it comes kind of a pyramid-like shape. And all, all that shade mark is just going to be filed off. To get that, there's a number of ways you do it. Old school way is with this file. It's called a three corner file. And this is uh, it's how I learned how to do it. It's how people
people have done it for many, many years. Um, you have to be careful. You want to use tape on the sides of each fret. Uh, a lot of people will tape up the whole fingerboard. You can do that. I kind of like to just grab two pieces of tape and move them along the whole way. Uh, so, so what you would do to get that is this is this has a safe edge right here, and we're just cutting on the on the edges. So this file allows me to just shave the sides of it off. I'm taking even strokes on each side. And I'm gonna keep filing, and I'm, I'm kinda turning my file, but I really just wanna see most of that red go away until I'm left with a thin line. And I'm just gonna make these little strokes. It's just a thinner center line there. And I can still keep going with it, and I will keep going with it with uh, further, further steps. But basically, our goal here is to get that thing round again, not have a square edge, and to not touch the top. Whatever we do, we don't want to touch the top, because then we would need to re-level. We would want to make everything go down to our lowest point. This is another option from Stu Mac. Um, which is what we use in the industry, pretty, pretty standard. It's, it's got diamond grit sandpaper in here and uh, a crowned shape. So you can actually put it on the fret and its crown is to the point where it won't actually touch the top. And we have a medium side and a wide side. So I'm gonna stick to the medium side and it should be just a few passes. And we're getting it nice and rounded over. And now we've done the first two frets. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna go all the way up and repeat this process. And like I said, I just use my tape and keep going. If you tape the whole board off, easily lose track of, of which fret you're on when you're sanding and stuff like that. So that's why I like to do that. Also, you don't have to spend 20 minutes taping off the whole board. Uh, this is a block of wood. It's a square block of wood that I've cut a crown in, just imitating imitating this. I just wanted to show like a low tech way to do it. And this is, this is what I use all the time. I got that crown with this file, putting this in the vise and running it through like that until, until I was happy with my crown shape. And then I also kind of hit the edges of this down, like in that motion, just so that the wood isn't hitting the fretboard. So that's a homemade fret file, a little square piece of wood. You, you file a groove into it and then hit the edges to make it smooth. And this works great. Uh, you have to use sandpaper with it. So. I'm doing 400 grit, 300 grit works, whatever you, whatever you need. Uh, I wouldn't go as low as 220, but like 320 to 400 is good. It doesn't have to be sticky at all, it's just what I got. So I wrap it around the uh, crowning, crowning block. And, and with this method, you do, you do hit the top of the fret, but, so you want to make sure you kind of push the, push the paper in there. And then we're kind of just focusing on either side, on either side of this. So I'm, I'm pushing one way with a pass, and then I'll push in this way with the pass. You can see our first three frets are done. And there's a thin, thin line on the top that we didn't touch, but the sides are smooth and round. So, so we're gonna, that's our, that's our goal right here to go all the way through this neck. These are nickel alloy frets, this, this, the industry standard. Um, but if we're using stainless steel, all I would do differently is start with a higher grit. So if you're using sandpaper, you would want to start with, oh, 220 or, or heavier. For me, I think the final polish is really good with steel wool. Um, if we go as high as buffing, that's great and it looks beautiful, but after a couple hours of play, it'll go back to that steel wool finish polish. So. This, that's a really good way to go. 
Good fret dressing lets you play with really low action. So we're on 600 grit. Um, this, this is a little different of an approach because 600 grit paper is not cutting anymore. We're not changing the shape. We're, we're just uh, removing scratches from the 400 grit paper. So I am going to put this right on the top. And I'm going to just do even strokes all the way down. I'm going to give each fret the same exact treatment, so new paper each time. And I'll probably do, I'll think of a number, you know, I'll probably do six strokes on each one and, and see what that's looking like. Believe it or not, that is a fret. <laughs> So imagine the fingerboard being right here. Each fret is going to be in that in that way. So I'll try to draw a nice crisp crisp one here. And this is this is what we have. And then there's a bit of a a crown on on each end of it. So what I want to do is knock off this sharp edge on each side of the fret right there. So what we'll, what we'll end up with is a fret that has ends. This is exaggerated, but the fret ends have that little bevel right there. No factories that I know of do this. This is something like this is a bonus, um, but it just really cleans up the feeling of those frets. And, since we're doing a dressing, it's time to do it. Another Stu Mac file, it's a fret end dressing file. And I use the back side of it, so there's a really sharp, crisp edge right here. And I'm gonna start on one side of the neck, and I'm just gonna hit this corner, and I'm gonna do three strokes. And I'm kinda twisting and turning. I'm gonna count my strokes on this, when, and when you want consistent results, counting the stroke is, is helpful because we, we want each one of these frets to be identical. So starting on this side, I just did four strokes and, and I'm doing exactly that like we did on the paper here. I'm, I'm filing the edge over just on the very bottom of the fret just to get it kind of rounded over on the end so that we don't have any sharp edges. So again, I'm just hitting the very bottom edge and I'm going to stay on one side, and I'm going to work my way all the way down. So first pass, I went you know, one, one side. I'm just going for consistency, so four strokes on this way. And then I'll do the same thing on this side, but four strokes on each fret. So now I just flipped it over because it's kind of more comfortable just for me. I can't, I can't work the frets on this side of me. It would be an awkward feeling. So I flipped the guitar over. I'm going to do the same thing. Four strokes on each fret. This is also part of bonus section. I take a razor blade and I just want to roll over the edge of the fretboard slightly, and part of it is because of what I just did. I made tiny little scratch marks right next to each fret. So I'm just gonna go to each fret and, and knock over the edge of the fretboard. And, and that will hopefully s just give a little round feeling and then it'll smooth out my file marks. Because I'm not allowed to introduce any new marks right to this guitar. It doesn't take much. We're just knocking the crisp edge off. I'm going to cut a couple pieces of 600 grit here. We just got to now get rid of the file marks and the little razor blade scratch marks. Actually wrap this paper up and I try to get like a nice firm uh, round right here. And then I'll take it to the fretboard and go in between each fret and rub in between and that's gonna what it's doing is is rounding each corner ever so slightly it's also rounding that round over a little bit more and it's also hitting the ends um, but mostly what I'm trying to hit is in between each one here 
And again, not super critical up here, but down here and anywhere that your hand is going around. It's a really comfortable feeling to have that nice and rounded over. So I'm, I'm focusing in between each fret. We're gonna finish it off with steel wool and we like, I like Howard's bean wax. We all like it as a shop. It's good, it's orange oil and beeswax and it's, uh, it's just a wood polish. We put it on unfinished wood. A little feed and wax, I'm just gonna put it right on. And four aught steel wool, as fine as it gets. Not pressing hard at all, just gonna kind of rub. Uh, I'm letting the fingerboard get conditioned, I'm letting the frets get their shine on. Go in the direction of the wood. It is a good feel, another pro tip. If you, after you're done dressing the fingerboard, if you wanna take the steel wool and go with the direction of the frets, that is a good feeling. It makes the frets feel really nice. Um, you, need to, you need to guard the fingerboard somehow. You don't wanna put scratches in the fingerboard that way. So it's a good amount of extra work. That is a nice feeling. We love that feeling. The strings really slide smoothly over the frets. A good amount of extra time, you know, because then you're sitting in here with the tape and sloppily going across the board. There's, there's little tools that Stu Mac makes that is built for this. It's a little piece of metal and it goes around here, but I'm trying to show low tech. Oh yeah, you got one. This is, this is that tool, which is, you know, these are cheap, but that way you could stick it over, you could stick it over your fret and grab your steel wool and, and go with the grain. So since, since we got it, I'll, sh I'll do it. But just in general, know that this, this is totally acceptable and works. This kind of takes you to the next level. I like putting the Howards on the steel wool because it, it makes this like mud of Howards and steel wool rather than the steel wool just kind of going everywhere. Because if you do the steel wool dry, it flakes and goes everywhere. And it'll scratch the finish, it'll get on the bench, and then the guitar will rub on the bench and stuff like that. So it helps to get it wet with the Howards. So now we're in the, the cleaning and setup phase. I'm just gonna kinda clean the guitar off a little bit because the strings are off. Spraying my towel. Just giving it, give it a little love. We're gonna just set it up now. We're gonna put some strings on it and see how it liked that fret dressing. But we'll, we'll put the strings on and then We'll, we'll get it up to pitch and I'll set the truss rod accordingly. I know I'm gonna have to tighten it. I know it's all the way loose right now. And I'm really happy with the way that it's looking right now. It's looking level. So I'm gonna give it like an eighth of a turn, tighten it. Hopefully that's, oh. So right now it's all the way loose. I'm gonna just engage it. Now we get to test it, right? We got, this, these were our sour notes, which these were our low areas. I'm just trying to hear clean notes, you know. It feels right. I could tighten that truss rod a little more, get the action down a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. Another eighth of a turn. That looks, it looks be much better. That was our worst note. We had that one bad. So I'm liking that. It feels pretty good. Let's check the action. You know, we're not really setting this up, but but you always want to. So it's still high. We can get the action lower. 
And I'll probably do that at the saddle. I need to take the action down a little bit because the whole point of the fret dressing is like we want to be able to get the action really low because the frets now can handle it. Um, and it's good right now, like I would say it's, it feels great. But the action is about six and five. And I just know this customer, he has, to, he has to get his action as low as possible. I think he plays really light. So I'm going to take a little bit of the saddle down uh, by filing off the bottom of the saddle. And then I'll put it back on and reset it, restring it, like same strings, but re tune it up to pitch. And it should be like five and four. That's what I want in 64. So at the 12th fret, five and four. Uh, the proper way to do it is I can use the string as a straight edge, and I'll fret the first fret here. I'll fret the 15th fret here with my pinky. And then at the ninth fret, I'll check. That's kind of the middle point of this neck. So I just want to have some room there. There is a spec. There is a measurement. You can do this with the feeler gauge. Um, eight to ten thousandths of an inch is a good place to be. I like to go down like four, four or six, more of a flat neck. Um, but to do this, you can't really use the string, so, so you would use a straight edge. And this is just to, this is setting your truss rod. But I'll, I'll put my straight edge on, and then I'll go into the middle of the neck, I'm on the tenth fret with my feeler gauge, and I want that just to slide under. So it's not already sitting on the fret. There is a little bit of movement, but not a visible, not a visible amount of movement. Are you really interested? You're so good. Thank you for your support. I feel confident that the frets are, are level. So it's, it's playing good, clear notes, and it wasn't before. So that's pretty much a wrap on the fret dress. Right on, guys. So I'm glad you tuned in and, and got to check out the process of this fret dressing with us. Um, it's something we do all the time, and it's, it's tedious, and it's a craft, and we offer it. We're happy to do it for you guys, 180 bucks, and it's completely worth it, because the, the tool investment is, you know, a few hundred dollars, and then you got to spend a few years dialing in your chops and getting it just right, and then you can start practicing on your nice Martins. I would start, you know, start on some squires and, and some, some lower level budget guitars, you know, because the first couple times you do take files to your frets, you, you have potential to make mistakes. And I just know that because I've made those mistakes. So long story short, try it yourself. If it doesn't work out, we got you. If you enjoyed this deep look into guitar repair, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at James Hood Guitar. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, we'd love to hear from you. Put a comment below in the comment section. Thanks for watching.